Hey fellow Trek Chatters, I'm Pit Trekkie and welcome to another episode of Pittsburgh's Trek Chat. So today's episode is actually going to follow in the footsteps of the previous video that I did in which I talked about the crew of the Titan A who will be premiering in the third season of Star Trek Picard. Talked a little bit about the new characters on the bridge and what they were going to what their roles were going to be and a little bit about their backgrounds. So what I want to do is continue on with that. So there was a there's a little link on Instagram to something called Star Trek Logs. And if you click on it, it goes to there are links for about nine different audio clips, basically. And they're basically captains or crew logs of all of the characters who are going to be in Star Trek Picard as the regulars this season to kind of fill in the bio of what happened when they went from the next generation and now onto Picard. What have they been doing during this big gap? that we don't know about. So that's what I'm going to be reviewing today. So we have the six remaining Next Generation characters that we're going to discuss. There's also an updated bio for Seven of Nine and for Raphael Musiker or Raffi. There's a link for lore, since Brent Spiner obviously Data is dead and we know from all the different reports for over the last number of months that lore was going to be playing a role this season in the show. So they have an updated bio on what he's been up to. And there's also, there are also ship bios as well, which is really interesting. So the first one is about the Enterprise lineage history. All right. So we're not going to get a whole lot into all of the Enterprises, but we are going to talk a little bit about the Enterprise F, which is going to be shown this season, and maybe a little bit of the Enterprise E we're going to talk about as well. There's also an updated bio or history on the new Titan that the, the characters are going to be on and also a brief little update on what's happening with the La Serena at this time. Now that Rios is gone, what happened to the La Serena? So we're going to find out. So let's go ahead and get started in some of these basic bios. So Captain Picard, obviously, or I should say Admiral Picard at this point, there was really nothing to update on him. They just gave, in, if you click on his, his log entry, the computer is basically just giving an, uh, a synopsis of his history from when he was born in Labar, France in 2305 up until the end of the second season of Picard. So there's really nothing new that was filled in there at, the, at this time. But I mean, it's still worth reading just to kind of see the fact that they actually got the history very well. They, they researched it very well. So going on to Admiral Riker at this point. So we last saw Riker with his wife, at Counselor Troy on the planet Nepenthe in the first season episode of Picard named Nepenthe. So basically what we learned about Riker and Troy going there, Riker left Starfleet or took a sabbatical from Starfleet. They went to Nepenthe because they, they had two children. They have Thaddeus and they have Kestra. So their son Thaddeus got sick with some sort of disease and they moved to Nepenthe because it had apparently some sort of regenerative capabilities and they decided that they thought that, that would help him, but unfortunately it didn't, and he passed away. I guess with some of the synth research that was going on, because it got banned, there was possibility that synth research could have actually helped save Thaddeus' life, and it didn't end, end up happening. So, what we also know from the season finale, first season finale of Star Trek Picard, is that Riker led the fleet to Capellius to thwart the Romulans from actually... Uh, destroying the planet. So he returned to active duty in 2399 according to his updated bio and what it says here is he continues his role in Starfleet having most recently led Hicks experience on the new Titan refit. That's pretty much all we know about Riker at this point. Obviously I think the little gaps between the end of season one going into season three will be filled in as the season goes on. Uh, but at least we know that Riker stayed in Starfleet at this point. Going on from Riker, we'll talk about Counselor Troy. So she still holds the rank of commander in Starfleet, but she resigned from Starfleet when Thad, their son Thaddeus got sick. Again, they were hoping that Nepenthe's properties would have actually helped to heal him. So it, does, it doesn't seem as though Counselor Troy has come back to Starfleet at this point. Even though she still holds the rank of commander, 
what her updated bio says is basically just one sentence. It's, Troy continues to hold a rank within Starfleet should her expertise be needed. I wonder what that means at this point. So, obviously, apparently her expertise is going to be needed during whatever mission, whatever issue is going on during Picard's third season. Um, but really, it's, it's, there's not much to go on with Counselor Troy at this point. So, if anything, I would say she was probably the least updated in, in the crew bios next to Picard. So now moving on to Dr. Crusher. So we know from a lot of different rumors and a lot of different producers and from the trailers themselves that Dr. Crusher actually spins the whole story arc for this season and makes it go. Okay, She starts the ball rolling. So basically what they said about Dr. Crusher is she later resigned from Starfleet after her tenure on the Enterprise E and she was undertaking private medical missions throughout the Alpha and Beta Quadrants on her personal ship, the SS Helios. Dr. Crusher's current whereabouts are unknown. I find that very, very interesting. Where, what is going on with Dr. Crusher? She's on the SS Helios, but is she on some sort of secret mission for Starfleet? Or has she cut off contact with Starfleet because she's doing some sort of dangerous, risky mission that maybe Starfleet wouldn't approve of? Either way, all we know is the SS Helios gets attacked, Dr. Crusher sends an SOS basically out to Admiral Picard asking for his help, but also says in one of the trailers, do not trust anyone or trust no one. Okay, so who knows what's going to be going on at this point. There really hasn't been any more exposition on it. We don't know how the villain Vatic plays into this role. We also know that Dr. Crusher has some young gentleman, probably in his 20s or 30s, who's kind of his assistant, her assistant basically on the Elios, and there are a lot of rumors going around online that this is her son with Admiral Picard. Don't know if that's going to happen or not. I kind of hope that it does. It would kind of tie the relationship together. I'm sure if they do have some sort of unknown son that Picard doesn't know about, that they'll find some sort of way to explain it briefly in the show without taking too much time. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see. We also know from from what some of the producers of the show have been saying is that Picard and Crusher must have had some sort of falling out. There's tension in their relationship at, with each other. So what caused that? Was it they were they in a relationship that died pretty quickly and left bad bad taste in both of their mouths? Or did some other issue occur? Well we're gonna find out because the third season of Star Trek Picard premieres tomorrow. So excited to find out about that. Moving on to LaForge. So he's no longer a lieutenant commander at this point. He's now a commodore. And that's going to be really exciting to see. Um, we never saw, except for Commodore O in the first season of Star Trek Picard, we never saw commodores during the next generation era, at least to my knowledge, unless I missed something. So I can't wait to see Geordi as a commodore. That's going to be cool. And it actually seems like he has his own unique uniform at, for being a commodore. But they did say that he was born in, born in Somalia in the African Confederation on Earth. I don't know if that was ever mentioned in any of the episodes or if that was in a crew bio that I had never seen. But to me, that was new knowledge. So that's exciting to have found out about that. Also, what we found out is that he met Captain Picard while piloting a shuttle to an inspection. I don't know if that was an inspection to the Enterprise D. I'm assuming that it probably was and that he must have really liked Geordi and decided to bring him on as the helmsman, which he was for the first season of TNG. So what LaForge's bio says is after he left the Enterprise E, LaForge received the rank of Commodore and was given a series of special assignments by Starfleet Command. His daughters, Sidney and Alondra LaForge, also currently serve in Starfleet. Now, if you guys remember, Alondra and Sydney were mentioned in the anti-time future that Captain Picard experienced in the TNG series finale, All Good Things. So, at the time, he was married to Leah Brahms. So, I'm wondering if, if we're going to find out if he is married to Leah Brahms in this our, ter our timeline as well. Well, we have Sydney and we have Alondra. Apparently, La Alondra is a chief engineer, or just an engineer, who loves to build ships, build things, and she followed in Geordi's footsteps where Sidney became the helmsman of the Titan, which I've discussed in a previous video. So it says here again, though, that he was given a series of special assignments by Starfleet Command. Can't wait to find out what those were. I guarantee you that they're not just going to breeze by that. Was it something about maybe getting the fleet together after the Dominion War? We know from the producers that the Dominion War 
after effects play some sort of role in this season. So that, that would be part of where my thought would go on it. Maybe he was developing new ship technology. I mean, look, the Titans got updated uh, technology that, uh, that wasn't in any other starships before. So it'll, it, who knows what he was up to, but I can't wait to find out. We also know that Geordi doesn't seem any, really too happy about being called by Admiral Picard for whatever mission is going to be going on. There's a picture of him on a view screen where he actually seems pretty upset or irritated. So can't wait to see what that's all about. Also, just out of curiosity, since we have Sidney and Alondra, who were mentioned in the anti-time future, is his son Brett also going to be mentioned somehow, but just maybe not seen? Or will we see him at another point during this season? Can't wait to find out. I'm really excited to see what happens with Jordy. I'm just glad to know that he ended up finally getting some and actually ended up having a family. Because if you know, in The Next Generation, he had no luck with dates at all or finding a relationship. So congratulations to Jordy LaForge for finding a woman and actually being able to have children. So awesome. The character that I'm really, really probably the most excited about learning what has happened to over the years between Next Generation Deep Space Nine and Picard is Worf. So what we find out about Worf is after he was a brief he was a brief he had a brief tenure as a diplomat, which we know from Deep Space Nine's final episode, he became the Federation ambassador to Kronos at the request of General Martok. But then we saw him a year or two later aboard the Enterprise E, serving again at Tactical in Star Trek Nemesis and the Enterprise E. So, following his brief tenure as a diplomat, Worf returned to Starfleet, serving aboard the USS Enterprise 1701E and in other assignments that resulted in his promotion to the rank of captain. His time aboard the Enterprise E was brief, having stepped down after the incident above Kriller Prime. Worf's whereabouts since then are classified. Why? What's been going on with Worf? Why are, is he classified? Is he still in Starfleet? I believe that he is. I think in a lot of the still pictures, we see Worf, at least with the Starfleet comm badge and four rank pips. So from what I, I believe I've read online, it sounds like that Worf was captain of the Enterprise E for a brief period of time. It doesn't say how long, and it doesn't say if he was necessarily the final captain of the Enterprise E. But maybe he was. Maybe this incident aboard... Uh, Kriller Prime, maybe what happened was is that, you know, maybe he was he was removed and the Enterprise E was retired. I guess we're going to find out. I can't imagine we're going to have the Enterprise F this season and then the Enterprise E not be explained about what happened to it. Okay, so it'll be very, very interesting to see what happened after the whole Enterprise E situation. Okay, so those are the six basic Next Generation characters. Now we're going to move on. We're going to, I'm going to give a brief update on Seven of Nine. As we know, she's going to be the first officer of the Titan A under the command of Captain Liam Shaw. What was really mentioned in her bio after her Voyager and talking about the being in a Fenris Rangers, it says, with help from Admirals Picard and Janeway, Seven received a Starfleet commission. She ser currently serves as first officer on the USS Titan NCC 80102A under the command of Captain Liam Shaw. So we didn't really get any more updated bio about her. So we know what, what she's going to be serving as, but it'll be interesting to see how that role affects her in this mission during this season. Raphaela Musiker, or Raffi. Um, is also mentioned in, with a bio. So obviously they gave the history of what, what had happened with her when she served with Picard. So basically it said that she was a Starfleet intelligence officer it, um, working in the Romulan Empire at one point. And during the Romulan supernova evacuation that Picard led, that, that fleet, she was the first officer with Picard on the flagship of the Romulan evacuation mission. Obviously when the, the synth attack on Mars happened, uh, Picard ended up leaving Starfleet because he was upset about the project being dropped. But also, Musiker was actually shipped out of Starfleet by Starfleet. They, they removed her. So she ended up going on Picard's mission to save Capellius and the, and the synths. That ended up, she ended up going back into Starfleet. She was a commander. When we saw her at the beginning of the second season, she was serving on board the USS Excelsior, and she was basically a mentor to Elnor. And after that, we don't know what happened. So here's what we, we know from the bio from Instagram. It says here, Raffi's log starts off with a with note. Commander Musiker's personal details are classified. All right. Here's how the log ends for the update for her. 
For years, Musicker has worked to overcome several addictions that plagued her life and Starfleet career with the hope that she might reconnect with her son Gabe and his family. Musicker's current Starfleet status is classified. Rumors suggest she has left Starfleet entirely. Her present whereabouts are unknown. All right. So what we find out a little bit from some of these character bios and from some of the little things that were slipped out by the producers. Apparently, Musiker has the La Serena at this point. Um, whether she's in Starfleet or not, nobody really knows at this point. I thought it was interesting that they said that her personal details were classified, but yet they mentioned her drug addiction and the hopes that she would reconnect with her son Gabe and the family. I'm sure that that's going to play some sort of role with Raffi. With this being the final season, I'm sure that the producer is going to want to get that wrapped up. I never really liked the idea of Musiker being some drug addict. It just seems like with what we had seen with Star Trek in the past, that by the 24th century, for the most part, that stuff was eliminated. And I just thought that was out of place with Musiker in the first season. Um, I was glad to not see really any of that in the second season. But it looks like Raffi's doing something, because in, in one of the trailers, it looks like she's squirting some sort of stuff into her eyes. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is some sort of addictive drug. It could be some sort of treatment for a medical condition. You know, these producers love to throw little curveballs, especially nowadays with, with current Star Trek. So we might have just been thrown off by that. But I, I hope that Raffi, by the end of this season, finds some sort of peace. Because she just seemed tortured throughout the whole, set, the whole series so far. Even with just last season, just down to her emotional distress over Elnor and, and how much she cared for him and when he had died, how that affected her. But thankfully he came back to life thanks to Q. But so I'm very curious to see why is Musiker's Starfleet status classified? So is she still in Starfleet doing some sort of secret mission but it's making it look like she is actually out of Starfleet just, and just kind of gone rogue about something? be very interesting to find out. All right. The next character we're going to talk about is Lore. So Lore is kind of a big enigma, big question mark for, for me this season. It's great to see that Lore is going to be back, but obviously he doesn't look like Lore should because apparently, you know, Sung androids, they're not supposed to age. But we have Lore in, in these trailers and in these still pictures that we've seen, he looks like an aged human male who actually has gold eyes. So it's very interesting to try to figure out what's going on with him at this point and how is he involved with the crew in, in this mission. So what we know about Lore, and this is even before we, we go into the, the bio, but we know that the last time we saw Lore was in the Next Generation 7 season premiere, Descent Part 2, where he was leading a group of uh, former Borg drones. And he basically became kind of cult-like. He was a cult-like leader. He was obsessed with turning the Borg into his version of perfectly artificial life forms. And we saw that that caused a lot of brain damage and dis in disfigurement, I guess is the word you want to say, for a lot of these poor drones, which led to Hugh leading the revolt against Hugh. And eventually, Lore got shut down by Data. And he was, t was told he was supposed to be dismantled so that he wouldn't be involved with any of these characters again and cause any chaos. So Hugh never brought any of that up during his time in the first season of Picard. So... That's all we know is that up to now, Lore was deactivated. But his bio says that after he was deactivated, Lore's mind and body have since been taken to Starfleet's Daystrom Station along with the late Alton Song's research. So if you don't remember who Alton Song was, he was the geneticist on Capellius who was working with all of the synths. He's also the one who came up with the technology to, for the Gollum body, which he wanted to use for himself, but he actually used when Picard died and transferred Picard's consciousness into that, that body. So I'm wondering, what happened? Did Lore end up getting a Gollum body and ended up transferring his consciousness in to that body? Or did somehow Dr. Sung modify his body to make it where it had some sort of aging program? The other question is, we know the emotion chip was that, that Lore had stolen from Dr. Song in the fourth season of Next Generation episode, Brothers, was given to Data, and Data had it. Now, we don't know if it was in Data when he was blown up on board the Scimitar and Nemesis. It might have been in his quarters. We don't know. They never mentioned it. Okay, so does Lore end up getting this chip back? Um, and, and quite frankly, even if he doesn't get the chip back, 
is Lore actually helping the crew with this mission? I mean, he's got a Starfleet uh, insignia on him of a comm badge, and he's on board the Titan with them. So did Lore end up getting reprogrammed by Alton Sung? Did, or did the geneticists at Daystrom Station have some sort of... Did they fix him in some way, stabilize him, and Lore finally saw the, 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 the wrongs of what he had done his whole life? Or are we, is it a ruse, or are we, and are we going to see the real lore pop out at some point? The one that we know is deceitful, and harmful, and cruel, and is deadly, basically. Can't wait to find that out the answer to that question. Okay, so those are it for all the character bios. So, like I said, there is a, a bio on the Enterprises, going all the way from NX-01 all the way to the Enterprise F. So... Obviously, we, what we know about the Enterprise F, okay, it's actually being retired. It's actually, at this point we see it in the show, it's 15 years into service, all right, and it's finally being retired. This is what the log says about the Enterprise F. NCC-1701F, Odyssey class, launched in 2386, commanded by several captains in the past 15 years, currently scheduled for decommissioning after cri the critical systems were compromised during the Mon Fet Gambit, the rescue efforts for the Relenian refugees on Fenton 4. The Enterprise F's final flight will be on display during this year's Frontier Day. What is Frontier Day? We've never heard of that before. So that's going to be a new little tidbit of lore added into the Star Trek continuity, which I'm excited about. So also, are we going to see any flashbacks to what happened with the Enterprise F? Or is this just going to be like some basic explanation to help the, the fans know why the ship is finally being... Uh, retired. But maybe this, uh, the rescue efforts for the Relian F refugees on Fenton 4, maybe be, they're bringing that up because maybe it plays into the situation that's going on to some degree. Who knows? Maybe Fenton 4, maybe that was a planet that maybe the SS Helios or Helios visited during, before the, this whole issue started. Who knows? It, it might all end up tying together into an interesting bow. All right? But that leads to me to wondering, what happened to the Enterprise E? Because in canon, as of now, there's nothing that states what happened to it. I personally was hoping the Enterprise E was still in service, maybe getting ready to be retired, and maybe Worf had been the captain. Um, but it doesn't really say much about that. All it says here, um, it says that the Enterprise F obviously is a successor to the Enterprise E, last seen in Star Trek Nemesis. And it says regarding the Enterprise E, the log ends with final mission classified. What happened to the Enterprise E? And I guess that ties into Worf with whatever was going on during that, 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 that mission that he went on that ultimately led him to leaving the Enterprise E. I hope we get more than just a one phrase answer. I hope we actually get some sort of concrete answer and we find out actually what happened to the ship. All right? So also that they have a bio about the Titan A. So there's actually some very interesting stuff that happened here with the, with the Titan A. It actually turns out it's the third Federation starship to actually be named the Titan. The first one was actually in the 23rd century. It was NCC-1777 Shangri-La class, launched in 2290 under the command of Captain Savick. So that's a pretty nice tie-in. Uh, known for its multiple encounters with the Klingon Empire, including the Exoport Takeover and Horizon Colony Rescue. The Titan became Starfleet's flagship under the recommendation of Captain Sulu of the Excelsior. The Titan was instrumental in maintaining frontier stability before the Kittimer Accords and the subsequent launch of the Enterprise B. So I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of history on the original Titan. I think they just created that to fill it in just to kind of make the Titan A's history kind of interesting. We also find out a little bit about Captain Riker's Titan from Star Trek Nemesis and from Star Trek Lower Decks. It was launched in 2379 Luna class. It was designed for contemporary threats such as the Romulans and Borg. I mean, the Dominion War just ended around that time, but I mean, I'm sure that it was designed for that to some degree as well. Um, it was also a tactical heavy cruiser. In 2380, several dangerous, dangerous missions securing the Federation border of the Beta Quadrant occurred. So I don't know exactly if that led to the decommissioning of the Titan, and, and then Riker obviously finally left Starfleet or took a sabbatical because of his son. But apparently the new Titan A is actually the original Titan. Um, it's just it was redesigned so much that it became a totally new ship and a whole new class. So what it says under here is NCC 80102A Constitution 3 class, referred to in Starfleet slang as Neo Constitution class. 
This new Titan is primarily an exploratory vessel honoring the retro design of the Constitution Class II, which was the refit. Launched in 2402 under the command of Captain Liam Shaw, work began on a refit using the original Titan space frame. However, with the development of cutting edge technology, the Titan's design changed mid-construction and a new ship took form. As per tradition, Starfleet engineers affectionately designated it as a refit, having kept much of the original Titan's internal components. So basically, part of the frame, the skeleton, is, and some of the components are still from the original the, the Riker's Titan, but a whole new ship was designed around it. The Constitution III was designed to cater to a close support envelope at sublight speeds, namely in and around densely populated solar systems, as witnessed by its overpowered impulse engines, which we know as four impulse engines. To date, the new Titan has the largest sublight power to geometry ratio in the fleet. So, I can't wait to see what this new Titan is going to be capable of. Um, and I'm glad we got a little bit of history about that, kind of like the Stargazer. We got a little bit of a history of the Stargazer as well in Picard Season 2. And we already know that they do that kind of refit of a, of a ship and then give it an A designation. It happened in the 32nd century with Discovery. They refit the 23rd century ship into a 32nd century ship and call it the Discovery NCC 1031A. So that, that, that makes sense to me. The last little bio that we have is on the La Serena. So we find out, and I think they mentioned this earlier too, but it was, it's the SS La Serena NAR 93131. And it's a Kaplan F-17 speed freighter, which obviously Captain Rios actually took and obtained when he left Starfleet. Um, and then when he rejoined Starfleet after the first season of Picard, he gave it to Seven and Nine when he assumed command of the Stargazer, and she used it to, to fight as a Fenris Ranger. Now that Seven of Nine is on board the Titan as first officer, Apparently, the ship was given to Raffi, but we don't know exactly what. But here's the brief bio from the La Serena from Instagram. Following Seven of Nine's admission to Starfleet and assignment to the USS Titan NCC 80102A, Raffaella Musiker took command of La Serena. However, current ship status and whereabouts are unknown. So there's that other question mark, that nice little piece of what's going on with Raffi, what is she doing with the La Serena? I was afraid that they actually weren't going to bring the La Serena back now that Rios is, is gone and Seven of Nines in Starfleet. So it's, I'm glad that they're going to continue that because that's been the hero ship for the series. So I'm glad we'll have one last adventure with the La Serena to some degree. So that basically, that takes it, that's about it for these character bios and ship bios that were brought up on Instagram under Star Trek Logs. Click on that on Instagram, and it has logs from Star Trek Prodigy there as well. If you haven't watched any of those, you can go back and then tie those in if you do a rewatch of Star Trek Prodigy. So I am really excited about Star, Season 3 of Star Trek Picard. I'm hoping that continuity gets followed. It looked like the character logs were on point. There were no problems with those. Um, very much involved and fit in with canon. I didn't see any blips. So that makes me feel hopeful. Plus a lot of big Star Trek fans like Robert Meyer Burnett have, have actually given a lot of support to the series. So I'm really excited to see what they, what's happened. A lot of the Next Generation actors also feel that this gave their characters closure that they actually felt they didn't get in Star Trek Nemesis. Whether that means any of the characters die, I don't know. All I know is that if any of them are going to die, let's hope that they have a proper send-off after these characters, they've been part of their lives for 35 years. All right. So let me know what your thoughts are about the upcoming third season of Star Trek Picard, which premieres tomorrow, February 16th, on Paramount+. Plus. What do you think about these bios, what the updates about the Next Generation characters and the Picard characters are, and about these ships? Please feel free to comment down below. I'd love to uh, get feedback to you for whatever you say from your feedback. You can obviously follow the show here. If you're, you're looking for the channel, just type Pittsburgh Trek Chat into the YouTube search engine. It'll take you directly to my channel. You can also follow the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash Pittsburgh Trek Chat, and as well on Twitter at PGH Trek Chat. I'm looking forward to beginning season three of Star Trek Picard with all of you, and until then, may you live long and prosper.